You know, when this movie first came out, it was in the wake of the Twilight Zone uh, scandal with John Landis. I don't really know why it was even attempted if people would take it seriously because his karma was bad. He, uh, he filmed this, literally filmed noir, with so many ca cameos, uh, extremely distracting. Richard Farnsworth, Carl Perkins, David Bowie, uh, and himself as one of the, uh, uh, what do you call it, key villains. It's called Into the Night. If you've never heard of it before, there's a reason, because unless you're getting, uh, you know, Hollywood Suite in Canada, it's very rarely on television. Now, Into the Night is an 85 American black comedy action thriller directed by Landis, starring Jeff Goldblum, of all people, and Michelle Pfeiffer. The film focuses on an insomniac aerospace engineer, played by Goldblum, who was approached by a jewel smuggler, Pfeiffer, whose life is in danger on the run from several international foes. The film was an obvious box office and critical failure, <coughs> with key critics in the United States and Canada and England, noting that the large number of cameo appearances by Landis's friends and colleagues was unnecessary and distracting. We'll get into that in a second. Now, upon discovering that his wife is having an affair, Aerospore, a space engineer and depressed insomniac, Ed Oaken, drives to LAX on his friend's herb suggestion. There he's surprised by a beautiful jewel smuggler, uh, played by uh, Pfeiffer called Diana, who jumps into his car and begs him to drive her away from four Iranian Savak agents who are chasing her. Well, that happens every day in LA. Not your typical film where, you know, with the term, someone's been chasing me or trying to kill me. And this is like, you know, a little bit too topical for anybody's uh, at the time. Uh, Pfeiffer's character persuades him to drive her to various locations, and he becomes embroiled in her predicament. And after becoming increasingly exasperated with their demands, just like the audience, he discovers that Diana has smuggled priceless emeralds from the Shah of Iran's treasury into the country as being pursued by a variety of international assailants. I, uh, I, I don't want to give away where she hid her jewels, but it's Michelle Pfeiffer figure it out and there's an unnecessary nude scene of her early on and she looks like anorexic in this movie uh, she looks better in many other movies but she looks tiny but by the time she plays Catwoman she's in better shape but here she got, she probably looks like Scarface side now the couple's caper gets increasingly out of hand until Diane is eventually taken hostage by the thugs at the airport here Ed Shears is on Wii with the man holding a gun to Diana's head the man shoots himself instead Taken to a motel room by federal agents, one of whom gives them a briefcase with $750,000 uh, in cash from one of Diana's wealthy friends, played by Richard Farnsworth. Diana showers and Ed finally falls asleep. He wakes up to have a full night's rest to an empty hotel room with most of the money gone. However, when he leaves the room, Diana is waiting for him with the money, a smile, and a request for a ride to the airport. Now, directed by Landis, Written by Ron Coslow, produced by George Fosley, Fosley Jr. and Ron Coslow. Uh, again, Richard uh, Farnsworth, uh, Rian Pappas, and the beautiful Catherine Harrell, who was murdered here in a very disgusting scene, uh, and she's wasted. Now, uh, Robert Painter with cinematography, edited by Malcolm Campbell, music by Ira Newborn, uh, with uh, several uh, classic songs on a soundtrack, and a single by B.B. King, which had a video. That Hoba had a whole bunch of cameos, including Eddie Murphy, of all people. Now released uh, by Universal February 22nd, 1985, 115 minutes. Uh, it didn't break even at the box office, but on video it did a little bit better. $8 million budget, $7.5 million uh, uh, revenue. Now, uh, Paul Berserski, of all people, the director and actor, plays Bud Herman. Vera Miles, who again is wasted as a Joan Caper. Jane Fonda's ex-husband and director Roger Vadim as Monsieur Melville, a very, very one-note performance. Clue Goulger as a federal agent. Dan Aykroyd as Herb. David Bowie as a mental, mentally crazy, uh, not say killer, but has to be seen believed, plays Colin Morris. <coughs> Bruce McGill as Charlie. <coughs> Carl Perkins with his afro as Mr. Williams. Stacey Pickren as Ellen Aachen. Carmen uh, Arginiziano as Stan. David Cronenberg as the group supervisor, Domingo Ambrose as the taxi driver, Jack's, Jake Stanfield as Larry, Art Evans as Jimmy, and again, Michael Zan, uh, Bruce uh, Gramian, and uh, Hadi Sajjad Shadi as the Sayavak agents, besides Landis. Now, in addition to Landis, the film's director, appearing as one of the Sayavak agents, he invited numerous filmmakers, actors, and musicians to make cameo appearances in a film. 
now including Jack Arnold, the director of science fiction films, including It Came From Outer Space as the man with the dog in the elevator. Now Rick Baker, Academy Award-winning makeup artist and American World for London as the drug dealer. Paul Bartell, director of low-budget films, including Evie Graul as the Beverly Wilshire Hotel doorman. Jo- Jonathan Demi, who at the time directed a number of low-budget exploitation films as a thin federal agent with glasses, and uh, obviously would, uh, he would cast uh, Pfeiffer in some of his future movies. Now Richard Flanken, the uh, Australian director of Road Games, plays the aerospace engineer sitting next to Herb in the cafeteria. Carl Gottlieb, who co wrote Jaws as the large federal agent with the mustache. Amy Hankerling also shows up. She's the director of Fast Times at Ridgemont High, as Amy's the clumsy waitress. Now, Jim Henson also has a role as the man on the phone talking to Bernie, like to, likely a reference to Henson's manager, Bernie Brillstein, who had also executive produced the Blues, Blues Brothers and Spies Like Us for Landis. Now, Colin Higgins, who wrote Harold and Maude and directed The Best Little Horror House in Texas, plays the actor in a hostage film. Lawrence Kazan, another director and writer who did Body Heat, was the police detective who interrogates Bud. Jonathan Lind, the co-writer of Yes Minister, as a tailor of fits the Savic agents. Andrew Martin, the film director, plays the freeway driver. Daniel Petri, the director of Raising His Son, plays the director of the hostage film. Didi Pfeiffer, Michelle's sister, plays the hooker. Waldo Salt, the Academy Award winning star as screenwriter of Midnight Cowboy and Coming Hand, plays the derelict who informs enemy's car having been towed. Don Siegel, the, the director of Invasion of Body Satchers and Dirty Harry, plays the man caught with a girl in a hotel bathroom. Of course, this is the 56th version. And Blue Lou Marino, Marini, a saxophonist, is in the airport crowd. Now, members of the production crew also had cameos, including uh, uh, Wes Don, the makeup artist, and Christopher Dunn George, the camera operator, Annie Dono, the stunt coordinator, Sue D- Duggan, the costumer, William B. Kaplan, the sound mixer, David Sosna, the assistant director, Saul K. Hand, the unit publicist as Grip, uh, assistant director and publicist of the hostage film. Robo Painter was director of photography, plays the security guard. Now, the film was green lit by Sean, Sean Daniel, one of his worst, worst decisions as president of Universal. He was the executive at Champion Landis on National Lampoon's Animal House. Three weeks in a 60 day shoot, Landis was ordered to stand trial for involuntary manslaughter arising out of the Twilight Zone, Zone shoot. Daniel told the press he thought Landis and his colleagues had been unfairly sent to trial for what is obviously a human catastrophe, not a criminal act. I tend to disagree. Now, Into the Night uh, has not done well on Rotten Tomatoes, only 40% based on 25 critics' reviews, indicating a mixed critical reception. The critical consensus reads, despite its two stellar leads, Into the Night finds director John Landis indulging in far too many gimmicks in lieu of a well-rounded uh, story. story. Vincent Canby said a little uh, bit of Into the Night is funny in his New York Times uh, column. A lot of it grotesque and all of it has the inside matter of a movie made not for the rest of us, but for movie makers on a Bel Air circuit. Now, uh, uh, he didn't like, uh, go, he reserved praise for Goldblum. He does little except react to the outrages of others, which he managed with a good deal of comic poise. Uh, Pfeiffer, last seen as Al Pacino's cocaine zonk wife in Scarface, is so beautiful that one is apt not to notice that she has the potential for being a fine comedian. Now, some critics saw a large number of cameos by Landis's friends and colleagues as unnecessary and distracting. Roger Ebert said, If I had been the agent for one of the stars like Goldblum, Pfeiffer, Farnsworth, or Catherine Harold, I think it would have protested in the front office that Landis was engaging in cinematic autoeroticism and that my clients were getting lost in the middle of the family reunion. Now, with this... Uh, uh, despite negative reviews, Landis has said he was very pleased with the movie. Into Night was my first box office failure, and that was quite surprising to me because I hadn't done anything different. It was dark, but that's another thing. Critics don't like it when you fuck with genre. It's the opposite of high concept. High concept is when you can explain the movie in one sentence, but when things get muddled, they're, they, they're confused. I like Into the Night. It's got a wonderful cast. Now, it did when a special jury replies at the 85 Festival de Film Policier de Cognac. Now, the score for the internet was written by Iron Newborn, and he also composed two new songs for the film soundtrack, The B.B. King Into the Night, and, of course, My Lucille, both performed by uh, uh, the, the man of royalty himself, Mr. King. He also arranged a classic song in the Midnight Hour. The final edition of the soundtrack includes two songs 
composed by Ara, were not con- were, which are not included in the film soundtrack. Don't Make Me Sorry, co-written by Joe Esposito, performed by Patti LaBelle, and Keep It Light, co-written by Reginald Sonny Burke, performed by Thelma Houston. The official edition of the soundtrack also includes the song Let's Get It On, performed by Marvin Gaye, who was murdered by his father the previous years, and I Can't Help Myself, Sugar Pie Honey Bunch, performed by the Four Tops, both of which appeared during the film. No CD of the soundtrack has been issued, but all songs performed by King on the film soundtrack are available on classic B.B. King CD, CD for the Universal Masters Collection. On a vinyl edition, John Landis quotes about the film soundtrack. I presented Iron Newborn with the problem, composed a motion picture score to feature a particular player and not comprise his unique talents or integrity of the movie. Uh, compromise. The film is Into the Night, the player B.B. King. So the track listing, again, Into the Night, My, My Lucille in the Midnight Hour, all by B.B. King, Enter Shah- Shaheen and Century City Changed by Newborn, Don't Make Me Sorry by Patti LaBelle, Keep It Light, Let's Get It On, Marvin Gaye, and A Guy in Hand Help Myself. So the uh, the uh, the idea about this movie, like I said, con- conceptually speaking, uh, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer could have uh, could have chemistry uh, with a gay man, but <laughs> Jeff Goldblum is like a he's he's a dead fish in this movie because I mean he's playing the character that hasn't slept in days, but uh, Michelle Pfeiffer again, I was getting kind of worried about her because from Scarface to here it looked like she lost five or ten pounds. And, uh, you know, I was kind of concerned about her. Uh, if I was dating her, I would say, well, let's go out for a donair. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would give this movie two stars out of four. One star for Michelle Pfeiffer and one star for the, uh, conceptually speaking, to see Roger Vadim, how bad of an actor he was. I think Jane Fonda probably watched that and he said, you know, I was lucky to get away from this guy like almost two decades before because, you know... Uh, there was a, I, t- I think it's a true story that uh, Fonda was only allowed to call him Vadim, not Roger. So, but yeah, but he's terrible in this. But Richard Farnsworth is coming, is quite good, coming off the Gray Fox. But uh, to see Catherine Harrell murdered in that, that C uh, thing was just uh, terrible because uh, it's kind of a, you see, <laughs> Twilight Zone, the helicopter killing Vic Moore and those two young children. And here you got water as well. I don't think it was. You know, uh, good taste. If anything, it's exploitive. Anyway, Into the Night and the poster is uh, basically, it doesn't tell anything. It looks like a bunch of lollipops with uh, Pfeiffer and Goldblum being, being, you know, singled out for whatever reason. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, take care. And uh, don't forget, Hockey Night in Canada tonight, Boston, Toronto. Two boring things, teams, and who will bore the other enough to, so we can win. We'll see. And don't forget, Kentucky Derby coming up. Have a good one. Bye.